Pelican Catch 120. All right, we're gonna take this Pelican Catch 120 out for a little spin, first time on the water. So I switched it out for this MEPS Black Fury number four. This is a lure that I've had for a long time and it's got a lot of fish for me. And I'll show you the two that it just caught for me right now on the Catch 120. Get the camera off the tripod here. Pelican catch 120. Just sat in this seat. This is super, super duper comfortable. It's got uh, footrests that are adjustable. So you can set them at whatever distance you want. Access to the inside, you can store gear in there, which presumably is waterproof as long as you don't get water leaking inside the boat. There's a drain through the bottom that goes back into the lake. There's these really great handles on the sides, on the front, on the back for easy handling. Lots of cargo space in the back and comes with some bungee tie downs. So that's really helpful. There's a drain here. So if you get water inside the frame of the kayak, you can drain it, push that back in and then it's got a lock that locks it in place. Fishing rod holder, fishing rod holder, bungee on the side, bungee on the other side, little tie downs, the seat is adjustable so you can recline it or bring it up straighter. There's the underneath. going to be a hunting gathering contraption for sure. All right, we're going to take this Pelican Catch 120 out for a little spin. First time on the water.
There are some very clever features on this kayak. One is, I wanted to set this paddle down and they've already got a little thing built in. So it just sits on the bow nicely. Another one, a groove for your water bottle to lie down in front of you. And even this drain hole, I mean at the risk of plugging up the drain hole, I can put my second water bottle there. There's a measuring tape on the side, which would be good because uh, if I catch a pike today, there are certain size restrictions on the ones you can keep. So, just about loaded up and ready, ready to go. Shot. Adjustable footrests here also. Pretty comfy there. have a waterproof camera with me and I'm a little bit nervous about using my good camera on the kayak so what I've done is come into this bay it's less windy here and I'm gonna leave my camera on shore and I'm gonna go paddle around in this bay behind me and I want to try a few things on this kayak um, in the brochure they so show somebody stand-up casting I want to give that a try uh, maybe troll a lure a little bit using the rod holder do some casting from a sitting position um, and all I'm going to start with is a red and white uh, red devil casting spoon. Um, this spot's pretty bouldery, it looks good for a smallmouth bass and in the back end it's uh, pretty grassy and I'm hoping maybe there's some pike back there. Either one of which would be a great meal for my supper and for this video. So I think I've got an hour of recording time on this uh, card right now should be plenty of time to go try a few things.
spot. I started throwing that big red and white spoon around and I had a couple of follows from some smaller bass and I thought maybe it was a little bit too big for what was there. So I switched it out for this MEPS Black Fury number four. This is a lure that I've had for a long time and it's got a lot of fish for me. And I'll show you the two that it just caught for me right now on the Catch 120. All right, this is the first one you saw me catch. Bass. And the second one that you saw me catch. Pike. And you know when I call this a catch and cook, I really mean a catch, clean, cook, and comment. You're getting all those extra C's for free. So we're gonna clean these up and then we're gonna cook them. And maybe I'll talk about them a little bit. I also wanna talk about that Catch 120. Uh, so you saw me stand up casting. It's a pretty stable platform. It felt okay, but it felt a little bit like I was out getting uh, a core exercise workout. So you, you do wanna be careful while you're balanced out there casting. Um, I uh, liked how stable it was for sure. Very, very comfortable to sit in. Very easy to reach the rod holder slash net holder. Uh, so it's easy for me to reach around, grab the net, scoop those fish out of the water. Lots of room by my feet to handle these fish, dispatch them. Uh, and then I moved them into the back compartment, which has the orange bungee cord across. Uh, you know, now that I've done this once, I think I would make sure that I brought a stringer with me. Because if those fish, even after you dispatch them, they might flop around a little bit. And uh, these guys flopped but did not flop out. But I was a little bit worried about them. So I'd probably stringer these and then just tie that rope off to um, one of the dock cleats or uh, rope cleats that are on the uh, on the kayak. So it was, uh, it worked great. It was a really successful first outing. gonna scale this guy and then I think uh, I think we'll keep the skin on and then uh, just pick out the five boneless fillets after it's been cooked we'll just work around those bones and uh, that way we get to keep the skin on for all the flavor although I could do the five boneless fillets with skin on that's a possibility too um, what I'm gonna do right now anyway while we're out here and I can feed scales and got some things back to the world it came from is just scale them and gut them and then we'll take them home and I can always fillet them there if I change my mind It's nice to do this before they dry out too much. The scales seem to hang on harder uh, if you leave your fish in a bucket or in the bottom of your canoe and it dries out a bit. And then they're a little bit harder to scale after. So scaling them fresh works pretty well for me. Well, any uh, guesses on what this pike's been eating? Take the take the gills out too. Just find where they're attached on the bottom of the mouth. It's pretty 
pretty prickly working inside of a pike's mouth. Even the gills are toothy almost. Feels like along that gill plate and then cut along this gill plate I'm gonna, maybe I'll keep this because it might I always want to age my pike and I think you get the clythra is this bone here on the edge of the gills. So we'll keep it just in case that's the, the one I need. We're going to throw these guts out. Um, although there's a nice sized swim bladder there for eating. And I don't know, it's pretty something in the stomach maybe let's have a look yeah a digested a digested minnow I'm gonna do the same thing with the bass but I'm not gonna show it Okay, for the cook part, I've decided that I'm going to basically uh, stew these fish in a pot with some butter and some and some chives. It's a nice knife, eh? That's a uh, Mike Mosington Blade. He's in uh, the North Bay, Ontario area. Makes beautiful knives. This one came from Delphine. And we're going to boneless fillet this pike. So I'm starting at the back of the head, down to the backbone, and then along the backbone. Tail, sorry, to the top fin. Uh, there's some bones right along the middle line. So I want to cut on one side and the other side of the bones. And then just take that bit of meat off the off the skin basically. Now we're gonna take the side fillets off, so we'll just cut down. 
so we get the ribs or the side and follow the bones to the tail that should be boneless flip it over same thing that should be boneless now the tricky one so on the back here here's the center line with the spine and then these are the Y bones you can see a line of them here and a line of them on the bottom so I'm basically cutting on the bottom side of those Y bones until I hit the ribs and then simply following the ribs down to the belly. This is the trickiest part of the five fillet boneless method. Now, I'm also going to cut out the spin. And this is all pretty easy if you have a good sharp knife, as this one is. So that's boneless. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, center line, Y bones, and I'm going to cut on the edge of the Y bones. Or the other thing you can do is if you just cut right along the edge of the skin in a downwards direction, um, that's also pretty effective. And it's an easier line to follow than following those little bone ends themselves. You're more likely to avoid them if you uh, follow the skin edge. Down to the ribs. I caught some of those Y bones on this back piece. I think you might be able to hear them on the knife. Okay. There might be a couple of little ones there from where I messed up on that edge, but this is also mostly a boneless piece. I'll pick those out after. Now if you feel like you're wasting a lot of meat because of how much it looks like is on here, oh yeah, I don't want to forget to eat these. Swim bladder and reproductive organs. Um, you can cut this down into chunks and you can pickle it and what will happen is in the vinegar all these bones will soften up on a smaller pike like this and you'll end up with something where you can eat the whole piece bones and all so that's a cleaned pike um, I'm not gonna cook the head on this one now the bass How to fillet a bass. You just follow the spine down to the ribs and then follow the edge of the ribs down to the belly.
There's a boneless bass fillet. This guy's got um, pretty thin walled um, air bladder. We're not going to keep that, but we'll cut out these two little egg sacs. Those can get cooked into our fish meal. So behind the fin, cut towards the head. Take off this front piece with the fins. Follow the spine and along the ribs. When you get past this um, back fin, you can put the knife right through and then just follow the spine down to the tail. I don't clean a lot of bass, so this one's maybe not going as quick as it could. Follow the ribs. Leave that anal fin on the fish. There's another boneless piece. And that's that. Let's warm up this pan with a nice portion of butter, alright, chives, fresh from the garden. up in there. Some of our homeless fillets, we'll just cut those down into a more manageable pieces. There's that swim bladder and gonads, some pike, I didn't cut the uh, fin off of that one yet, so take that off. I was going to do this with my felt knife, but I already washed it, so scissors were close by and we were going to get chived anyway, so save myself some dishes. A little pot of rice going behind me that I better keep an eye on. That doesn't overboil. Maybe add some more butter, maybe a little splash of water, and just let it cook. Oh, it smells so good. I had a thought about it though, I threw in a little bit more butter, and I'm going to throw in some of this um, Graffolo Frondosa, the Hen of the Woods, because I think that might be good in there, just a little bit. Yeah, they also smell pretty good. Well, I'll soak up some of the liquid, add some flavor, and then I also was thinking maybe, maybe I'm going to pour a little bit of Chianti in there too. Let's try that out. Okay, let it stew. Rice is cooking. It's gonna be a good meal here soon. Oh, 
that's almost ready, I would say. We'll leave the lid off and we'll let some of that liquid evaporate. And rice is almost done as well. Better have a sip of this Chianti. All right, while our meal's cooking off the side here, let's try and age our Northern Pike. So the Clythrum is is the bone that was on the edge when the gills were in it it's this bone over here so we're going to just see if we can peel that off using mostly our fingernails Flesh and the skin off, and then There it is. So, I will clean this up a little bit and then we'll have a closer look at it. still. That's okay. And on our bed of rice we are going to add some of this stewed fish. I say stewed and not fried because it was in here for a longer period of time at a lower temperature with some liquids rather than being fried hot with fats. How does that look? I got a good uh, good sunburn on my arms. I was out paddling yesterday with Delphine and uh, we did a catch and cook rock bass video. And so today I wore, this is not my regular outdoor shirt, this is a rash guard with um, UV protection. And I put it on because I thought I might get wet in the kayak and I knew that I'd get some sun on me. And I did a really good job of keeping uh, my arms from getting reburnt, but you don't really care about that. You want to know about this. You want to know about this stewed pike and bass. Skin on, boneless fillets, bit of chives, butter, Chianti, and hand of the woods mushrooms. Hmm. And I can tell you that it's really good. The mushrooms are adding a, not a rubbery texture, but just a um, pieces of tougher texture in with the fish, which is pretty soft. The butter and the Chianti have really made a really nice oops, aroma. The rice is just adding bulk. The skin is good. And 
I haven't made a bone yet. Mm hmm. That's good. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. All right, you are looking at the fluorescent light on my ceiling and uh, where is it? Where is it? There it is. And what you're looking at here is the clythrum from that bike and the way that you age them is to count the growth rings. So I'm gonna leave it to you in the comments to tell me how old you think this pike is and whether you're just guessing or whether you've actually done this before and what I'm going to do is leave this video off on uh, a 15 second close-up picture of this jawbone